Hello students, welcome to EPG Pathshala. Today we shall be discussing about the types of platform used in remote sensing. So far we have studied about the concept of space and time, the various space agencies that exist in India and world and the fundamental principles of remote sensing. Remote sensing requires electromagnetic spectrum as well as sensors and platforms. So in this module we shall be talking about different types of platforms that are used for collecting remotely sensed data. These platforms are basically of three types, ground based, aerial as well as space born. In the, com in the coming slides we shall be talking about these types of platforms in detail. So coming to what are platforms. Platform is any vehicle or carrier for a remote sensor to collect and record energy reflected or emitted from a target or a surface. The platform on which a particular sensor is housed determines a number of attributes such as distance the sensor is from the object of interest, periodicity of image acquisition, timing of image acquisition and location and extent of coverage which may dictate the use of particular sensors. An important factor for the selection of a platform is the altitude that in turn determines the ground resolution if instantaneous field of view of the sensor is constant. The selection of platform also depends on the purpose which is sometimes requested. For example, a constant altitude is required for aerial surveys while various altitudes are needed to survey vertical atmospheric distribution. For aerial photogrammetry, the flight is strictly controlled to meet the requirement of geometric accuracy. However, helicopter or radio controlled planes are used for a free path approach, for example in disaster monitoring. Another factor to be considered in selection of platforms is atmospheric condition which includes air pressure, air density and air temperature. Coming to the next topic of attitude of the platform. Attitude of the platform determines the geometric correction. It is classified by the following two components, rotation angles around the three axes which include roll, pitch and yaw. These are the rotation angles around the flight direction, the main wing and the vertical line respectively. Second one is jitter which is random and systematic vibration which cannot be measured. The typical attitude sensors for aircrafts are speedometer, altimeter, gyro compass for attitude measurement, Doppler radar for measurement of altitude, GPS for positioning, gyro horizon, TV camera and flight recorder. So in this figure you can see the three parameters which we discussed earlier, roll, pitch and yaw. Now coming to the third and major topic of this module, types of platforms. The sensor must be settled on a stable platform which may be situated on the ground, on an aircraft or balloon or some other platform within the earth's atmosphere or on a spacecraft or satellite outside of the earth's atmosphere. Therefore, the three broad categories of platforms include which are ground based platforms, airborne platforms and satellites. So now coming to the first type of platforms which are ground, ground based platforms. They are often employed for close characterization of objects and are used to measure the quantity and quality of light coming from the sun. For example, to study properties of a single plant or a small patch of grass. Examples of ground based platforms include tripods, ladder trucks, cherry pickers, tarts, grains, etc. Some of these platforms are fixed permanently to the ground to gain information about some terrestrial features requiring continuous monitoring or to record various atmospheric phenomena. This figure shows some examples of ground based platforms. Ground based platforms can also be classified according to the operational range that is short range, medium range and long range systems. Short range systems operate at ranges of 50 to 100 meter with panoramic scanning and are often used to map building interiors or small objects. Medium range systems operate at distances of 150 to 250 meters also achieving millimeter accuracies in high definition surveying in 3D modeling applications for example bridges and dam monitoring. 
Long range systems can measure at distances of up to 1 kilometer and are frequently used in open pit mining and topographic survey applications. Field instruments that are often handheld or mounted on a tripod or other similar support and largely used for research purposes are also included in ground based platforms. For example, portable handheld photographic cameras and spectroradiometers are used for laboratory and ground truth collection. The BOREAS which stands for Boreal Ecosystem Atmosphere Study field experiment was conducted to gain knowledge about relationships between the boreal forest and earth's atmosphere. In cherry pickers, automatic recording sensors can be placed at heights of above 10 meter from the ground to collect data. Towers and cranes are used where stable platforms are required for longer duration. Towers can also be built on site for placing the sensors at higher level of observation. For example, to include measurements at various altitudes in forests such as forest floor, through the canopy and from above the canopy. Portable masts are mounted on vehicles and can be moved from place to place to support camera and other sensors for testing and collection of reflection data from field sites. Weather surveillance radar detects and tracks typhoons and cloud masses at distances of 400 km or less. Coming to the next one which are aerial platforms. Most commonly used airborne platforms are aircrafts and helicopters. Other types include drones which are short sky spy, balloon based platforms and high altitude sounding rockets. So coming to balloons, the balloon is a remote sensing platform having an altitude range of 20 to 40 kilometers which permits the experiment or operation to define the shape, size and performance required of the carrier. The sensor system in balloon based platforms is brought back to earth by tearing the carrying balloon through remote control. The advantages of balloon are that it offers it covers an extensive altitude range of 22 to 40 kilometers region for in situ or remote sensing measurements in the stratosphere. The balloon instruments provide the opportunity for additional correlative data for satellite based measurements including both validation that is atmospheric truth and complementary data for example measurement of species not measured from the space based instrument. Balloons as platforms are not very expensive like aircrafts and can be used for tes testing instruments under development such as unmanned aerial vehicles or satellite based remote sensing instruments. The balloons have low acceleration, require no power and exhibit low vibrations. The, there are three main types of balloon systems, free balloon, tethered balloons and powered balloons. Free balloons provide a platform at intermediate altitude between those of aircraft and spacecraft. Thousands of kilograms of scientific payloads can be lifted by free balloons. The high strength scrim materials are used for carrying payloads much heavier than is possible with polyethylene balloons. In addition to the weight of the sensor, the payload includes the weight of the parachute, instrumentation for balloon command and control tracking beacons or radar reflectors, ballast and rigging and other structures. Zero pressure balloons usually carry ballast which may be released either to increase the ascent rate or to compensate for a descent caused by thermal effects. The quantity of ballast that can be carried determines the flight duration of a zero pressure balloon. In contrast to the zero pressure balloons, super pressure balloons are completely sealed and require no ballast. They float at a constant density altitude and are capable of flight durations of many months. The super pressure balloons however can carry payloads of less than 40 kg and are relatively expensive. The free balloons are dependent on meteorological conditions particularly winds, the flight trajectory cannot be controlled. All these make ex it extremely difficult to predict whether the balloon will fly over the specific area of interest or not. In India, at present, Tata Institute of Fundamental Research in Mumbai has set up a national b balloon facility at Hyderabad. The figure shows the balloon ground stations for free as well as tethered balloons. 
you can see the sensors that are mounted on this balloon include those for carbon dioxide ozone sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides besides particulate matter the next one is tethered balloons which are connected to the earth station by means of wires having high tensional strength and high flexibility the tethered line can carry the antenna power lines and gas tubes when wind velocity is less than 35 kilometers per hour at the altitude of 3000 meters sphere type balloon is used and when the wind velocity is less than 30 kilometers per hour natural shape balloons are restricted to be placed tethered balloons have the capability of keeping the equipment at a fixed position for a long time and thus are useful for many remote sensing programs when considering the use of tethered balloons it is essential that the initial planning be concerned with the atmosphere and the air space in which the balloon will be flying to check for wind conditions and other meteorological factors although tethered balloons have been associated historically with wartime serving as both a passive means of defense against aerial attacks and as observation platforms for artillery spotters present day usage is much more broader encompassing a variety of scientific disciplines tethered balloons are being used to carry aloft various types of sensors meteorological measuring equipment communication relays and antennas the three main types of tethered balloons in use are sphere the natural shape and the single hull aerodynamic or streamline streamline shapes in a variety of fineness ratios and fin designs the hull design chosen for a system depends on such requirements as downwind displacement altitude payload wind speed flight duration and anticipated life the sphere has been used since the inception of tethered balloons and is far from obsolete although they are generally limited to winds below 55 km per are there are several areas of the world where tethered systems utilizing a spherical balloon could be used several months per year to fly at altitudes up to 3000 meters above sea level the principal advantage of sphere is its relatively low cost compared with streamlined shapes the na natural shape mainstay of free ballooning also provides a suitable tethered balloon its principal advantage is relatively low cost However, its use is limited to winds of less than 30 km per hour as mentioned earlier. Streamlined balloons have much higher wind speed limitations. They also tend to fly nearer to tether point than spheres in the same wind fields on a single tether. All tethers require a suitably high tensile strength, a high strength to weight ratio, low drag, low stretch, torque stability, high flexibility, abrasion resistance and easy splicing. Typical balloon tethering configurations are the single dual or tri-tether arrangements. The different configurations offer various degrees of freedom which are dictated by the intended balloon operations. In many instances, the tether line is designed to serve additional purpose such as to carry the antenna as mentioned earlier to encase the power line running from ground to sensors, to support an array of sensors along its length or the tubing for transferring helium to the balloon. Tapered or step diameter tethers may be desired for high altitude flights where the weight of a constant diameter tether cannot be safely borne. Most tether manufacturers have the capabilities for producing a unique tether to fit a specific need. Winches for tethered balloon operations are used to raise and lower balloons to the desired altitude and to make the necessary operational adjustments of the balloon altitude during flight operations. Relatively inexpensive hand operated winches or even fishing reels may be used for small low altitude balloons. Power driven winches come with a multitude of available features and can range in price from several hundred dollars to several thousand dollars. Some of the features of power driven winches for tethered balloon applications which add significantly to the cost of winch are variable speed drives, capstan or traction drives, level wind mechanisms and various line speed, tension and footage measuring instruments. The winch system installation may be permanent, mobile or portable. 
the third balloon winches are rarely off the shelf items and are usually custom tailored for a specific application many manufacturers have standard components from which special winches can be assembled thereby eliminating much of the design time and expense which would otherwise be required the next is powered balloons which requires some means of propulsion to maintain or achieve station over a designated geographic location these can be remotely controlled and guided along with a path or fly above a given area within certain limitations uh, next is radio sonde which is an airborne instrument that is used for measuring pressure temperature and relative humidity in the upper air the instrument is carried aloft by a meteorological balloon inflated with hydrogen the radio sonde has a built-in high frequency transmitter that transmits data from the radio sonde meter and recorded on the ground by a specially designed radio sonde receiver the next airborne instrument is raven sonde which is an electronic device used for measuring wind velocity pressure temperature and humidity aloft it is also attached to a balloon and as it rises through the atmosphere aircrafts are the most po popular means of aerial platforms and they offer high spatial resolution hence are used to collect very detailed images they have advantage of easily changing their schedule in order to avoid weather problems aircrafts carrying large format cameras on vibrationless platforms have been used to acquire aerial photographs at present airplanes are the most common airborne platform when altitude and stability requirements for a sensor are not too demanding simple low cost aircraft can be used as platforms however as requirements for greater instrument stability or higher altitudes become necessary more sophisticated aircrafts must be used aircraft platforms range from the very small slow and low flying helio courier to high altitude aircrafts Cessna Conquest a twin engine turboprop jet is capable of flying at altitudes up to 35000 feet unmanned platforms are becoming increasingly important particularly in military and emergency response applications both international and domestic flying height air speed and range are critical factors in choosing an, an appropriate airborne remote sensing platform The higher an aircraft can fly, the more stable a platform it is, but correspondingly more costly to operate and maintain. Aircraft often have a definite advantage because of their mobilization flexibility. A most important factor affecting aircraft stability is the local atmosphere. Winds, turbulence and other aspects of atmospheric dynamic cause most platform instability. At any given point, atmospheric dynamics will vary hourly and daily as well as seasonally. Clouds often appear and dissipate over a target over a period of several hours during a given day. Aircraft on site can respond within a moment's notice to take advantage of clear conditions. Aircraft can also be deployed in small or large numbers. making it possible to collect imagery seamlessly over an entire country or state in a matter of days or weeks simply by having lots of planes in the air at the same time the platform stability of the aircraft is subject to two types of instability the first one is vibrations created by the engines or other parts of aircraft The second one is rotations as we discussed earlier which includes pitch roll and yaw which occur principally because both the aircraft and the atmosphere are dynamic there are two basic ways of eliminating or at least reducing these two instabilities the first one is to provide a mount which isolates the sensor from the aircraft vibration and by gyros or similar devices maintains the sensor attitude with respect to the scene independent of aircraft rotations mounts of this type have been designed for general purpose use by the US air force the second approach is is in the selection and design of equipment and the aircraft itself a reciprocating engine creates considerable vibration a turbine somewhat less and even lesser is by a jet vibration is reduced and isolated by the use of appropriate engine mounts 
If the remote sensing can be limited to specific relatively small areas, propellers may be feathered or the engines even shut down for the critical periods of time if the aircraft is so designed. A high lift aircraft such as a porter with the engine shut off can actually hover or glide over a given scene for at least half an hour provided that there is a wind speed of 75 km per hour in which to head. The craft will be constantly losing altitude while the engine is shut down. The stability is affected by the type, number and use of engines as well. The design of the airframe itself as well as the sensor location with respect to the aircraft center of gravity are other parameters that affect stability. Equipping the plane with autopilots, damping and self-leveling devices may also reduce the amplitude as well as the rates of rotational motion. Heavily loaded, a plane flies at a steeper pitch than when the load is reduced, thus the sensor, if fixed to the aircraft, will change in attitude with the use of fuel. A crosswind will cause an aircraft to drift and if the sensor is not adjusted accordingly, the sensor axis and the ground path of the aircraft will not be aligned. So, accordingly there are three types of aircrafts, low altitude aircraft, mid altitude aircraft and high altitude aircraft. The low altitude aircrafts operate much below 30,000 feet and are most widely used uh, um, among the aircrafts that include single engine or light twin engine, for example C-130 cargo plane. They are suitable for obtaining image data for small areas, that is large scale imagery. Low altitude aircraft typically fly below altitudes where supplemental oxygen or pressurization are needed, uh, for example 12,500 feet above sea level. Included in this class are the common fixed wing propeller driven planes used by private pilots such as Cessna 172 or 82 and Piper Cherokee. This class of aircraft is inexpensive to fly and can be found throughout the world. Some of these airplanes are specifically outfitted for mounting remote sensing instruments in the underside of the plane. However, many times instruments are simply hung out the door using simple mounts. The next one is mid altitude aircraft which have an altitude limit of about 30,000 feet above sea level. This includes a number of turboprop aircraft. Often at higher altitudes, there is less turbulence, so stability is better. This class of airplane is used when stability is more important and when it is necessary or desirable to acquire imagery from a greater distance than available from low altitude aircraft. These aircraft can obtain greater aerial coverage more quickly than low altitude platforms. An example of this class is the C-130 cargo plane and the Cessna C-402. High altitude aircrafts can fly at altitudes greater than 30,000 feet above sea level and include jet aircraft with good rate of climb and maximum speed. For example, airborne visible infrared imaging spectrometer popularly ca called as a virus. These are generally employed for acquiring imagery of large areas, that is, these are small scale images and used for atmospheric studies, research to simulate satellite platforms and other applications where a high altitude platform is required. High altitude sounding rockets are useful in assessing the reliability of the remote sensing techniques. Synoptic imagery can be obtained from such rockets covering areas of about 50,000 km per frame. Once the desired scanning work is over from a stable altitude, the payload and the spent motor are returned to the ground gently by parachute, enabling the recovery of the data or photographic records. Another class of aircraft that has been in use for many years is remote control aircraft popularly called as drones. Remotely controlled aircraft are often used for conditions when it may be too hazardous to fly. They have been used extensively by the military and drone is a remotely piloted vehicle which looks like a miniature aircraft. It is capable of a climb rate of 4 meter per second with an operating altitude of 0.5 kilometers and a forward speed of 100 kilometers per second. The drone sensors can provide information to maintain the drone at the altitude demanded by the ground control 
or by programmed navigation system. Drone's payload includes the equipments of photography, infrared detection, radar observation and TV surveillance. Ultralight aircraft is another class of aircraft that is gaining popularity. The Federal Aviation Authority defines an ultralight as a single seat powered flying machine that weighs less than 254 pounds, has a top speed of 55 knots, stalls at 24 knots or less and carries no more than 5 gallons of fuel. These small often portable aircraft are inexpensive and are able to take off and land where larger aircraft cannot. They are limited to flying at lower elevations and at slow speeds. If the demands of the remote sensing requirement are not too strict, ultralight aircraft may be a reasonable alternative to larger aircraft. The advantages of aircrafts. Aircrafts can fly at relatively low altitudes, thus allowing for submeter sensor spatial resolution. Aircraft can easily change their schedule to avoid weather problems such as clouds, which may block a passive sensor's view of the ground. Last minute timing changes can be made to adjust for illumination from the sun, the location of the area to be visited and additional revisits to that location. Sensor maintenance, repair and configuration changes are easily made to aircraft platforms. Aircraft flight paths knows no boundaries except political boundaries. The disadvantages of aircraft include getting permission to intrude into foreign airspace that can be a lengthy and frustrating process. The low altitude flown by aircraft narrows the field of view to the sensor requiring many passes to cover a large area on the ground. The turnaround time it takes to get the data to the user is delayed due to the necessity of returning the aircraft to the airport before transferring the raw image data to the data provider's facility for pre-processing. The last category of platforms is space pond platforms. With the advent of space systems, a new dimension has been added to remote sensing. Platforms are no longer limited by the atmosphere and orbits can be defined which provide the following. Any altitude desired as long as it is effectively above that of atmospheric drag effects that is about 150 kilometers and still within the dominant gravity field of the earth. Configuration so that the entire earth or any designated portion can be covered at specified intervals. Constant position relative to the earth surface through the geostationary mode, thus permitting continuous sensing of a given section of the earth's surface. Space one platforms are the most stable platforms where sensors are mounted on board a spacecraft like rockets, satellites and space shuttles. These platforms move freely in their orbits around the earth. The entire earth or any part of the earth can be covered at specific intervals. The coverage mainly depends on the orbit of the satellite. It is through these space-borne platforms we get enormous amount of remote sensing data and as a result remote sensing has gained international popularity. Essentially these are satellite platforms which are of two types, manned and unmanned satellite platforms. Manned satellite platforms are used as a last, last step for rigorous testing of the sensors on board so that they can be finally incorporated in the unmanned satellites. Some of the manned satellite programs of NASA include Mercury, Gemini, Apollo, Skylab, Space Shuttle and International Space Station. Unmanned remote sensing satellites include Landsat series by NASA, Spot series by France and Indian remote sensing series by India besides other satellites. The important remote sensing data acquisition systems operating in different regions of electromagnetic spec spectrum are grouped in three broad categories, multispectral remote sensing, remote sensing in thermal infrared region and remote sensing in microwave region. So coming to what are these satellites, these satellites are the most stable platform aloft in a space one a system. It is any natural or man-made object that revolves around the planet in circular or elliptical path. These are placed at various heights and orbits to achieve desired coverage of the Earth's surface. Orbital geometry and timing are important criteria in classifying satellites. The orbits commonly used for remote sensing satellites are geostationary, sun-synchronous and polar orbit. The first remote sensing satellite was launched in 1960 for meteorology purposes. 
Now over 100 remote sensing satellites have been launched and more are being launched every year. The Space Shuttle is a unique spacecraft that functions as a remote sensing satellite and can be reused for a number of missions. The revisit time for a particular location is a function of the individual platform and sensor but generally it is on the order of several days to several weeks. While orbits are optimized for time of day, the satellite track may not always coincide with cloud free conditions or specific vegetation conditions of interest to the end user of the imagery. Therefore, it is not a given that usable imagery will be collected on every sensor pass over a given site. The frequency at which a satellite sensor can acquire data of the entire earth depends on sensor and orbital characteristics. For most remote sensing satellites, the total frequen coverage frequency ranges from twice a day to once every 16 days. Another orbital characteristic is altitude. The space shuttle has a low orbital altitude of 300 km, whereas other common remote sensing satellites typically maintain higher orbits ranging from 600 km to 1000 km. Most of these remote sensing satellites have been designed to transmit data to ground receiving stations located throughout the world. To receive data directly from a satellite, the re receiving station must have a line of sight to the satellite. If there are not sufficient designated receiving stations around the world, any given satellite may not readily get a direct view to a station, leading to potential problems of data discontinuity. To work around this problem, data can be temporarily stored on board the satellite and then later downloaded upon acquiring contact with the receiving station. Another alternative is to relay data through TDRSS, that is Tracking and Data Relay Satellite System, a network of geosynchronous or geostationary communication satellites deployed to relay data from satellites to ground stations. The payload for remote sensing satellites can include photographic systems, electro-optical sensors, microwave or LIDAR systems. For applications benefiting from simultaneous coverage by different sensors, more than one sensing system can be mounted on a single satellite. In addition to sensor systems, there are often devices for recording, pre-processing and transmitting the data. One obvious advantage satellites have over aircraft is global accessibility. There are numerous governmental restrictions that deny access to airspace over sensitive areas or over foreign countries. Satellite orbits are not subject to these restrictions, although there may well be legal agreements to limit distribution of imagery over particular areas. The disadvantages of satellite include the design of a sensor that is destined for a satellite platform begins many years before launch and cannot be easily changed to reflect advances in technology that may evolve. While all systems are rigorously tested before launch, there is always the possibility that one or more will fail after the spacecraft reaches orbit. The sensor could be working perfectly, but a component of the spacecraft could fail, rendering a very expensive sensor effectively useless. The financial risk involved in building and operating a satellite sensor and platform is considerable, presenting a significant obstacle to the commercialization of space-based remote sensing. So in this table you can see the various platforms for different satellites as well as airborne platforms, the altitude at which they travel, the observations and the remarks if any. So dear students, to conclude. I hope by the end of this module, we all have developed an understanding of the types of platform that are used in acquiring remotely sensed data. We have also studied uh, the types of platforms which are basically ground based, aerial or space bond platforms. We have also studied the advantages and disadvantages of each type of platforms like how the ground based platforms can offer higher resolution but the area of coverage is limited. The space bond platforms, they cover a larger geographical area, but the resolution may or may not be as high as the ground based platforms. The air based platforms, they lie intermediate between the ground based platforms and the space bond platforms. I hope you all have benefited from this module. Thank you.